Galax Jackson is having more copies made, so more will be arriving shortly. So don't worry if you're looking enviously over at your neighbor's handout. Yours is coming. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'm going to ask you to join me in welcoming Neil Sinhavava to speak on Zarathustra's Metaethics. Thank you very much, Andrew. Let me thank the department for setting this up and giving me a chance to give two talks. I was just blown away when I got this opportunity. Uh, I should also thank my benevolent overlords, the National University of Singapore, for funding my travel to the States so I can address all of you. And thank all of you for showing up, because this is the largest number of people I've ever been invited to address, and I'm very honored by this. Uh, so, Nietzsche may be the most forceful critic of morality in all of philosophy. Uh, but one thing, if you've read Nietzsche, you'll see that he does this. He often ascribes value of some kind to actions, characters, and ways of life. Uh, so this raises a question. How do we reconcile his criticisms of morality with his evaluative claims, with his positive claims that certain things are good and you should do certain things? Um, I take Nietzsche to be an error theorist about morality. Uh, he holds that uh, judgments of moral rightness, wrongness, goodness, and badness are all false because they are beliefs about moral facts, and there are no such moral facts, so they're all false. Uh, while being an error theorist about morality, he encourages us to pursue a kind of subjective, non-moral value that arises from our passions. Uh, defending this interpretation of Nietzsche and using it to better understand his thoughts about value, particularly in what he regarded as his greatest work, thus books are history. That's the task of this paper. Uh, First, I'm going to argue that Nietzsche is an error theorist about morality. Uh, this interpretation fits his remarks about morality and allows a good explanation of how atheism, uh, he was an atheist, threatens moral judgments, uh, as he thought it did. Uh, second, I'll defend a subjectivist interpretation of Nietzsche's positive value claims. Uh, on the subjectivist interpretation, value for someone arises from that person's passions. Uh, now, there's a lot of reasons not to be a subjectivist about morality. But the same things that disqualify subjectivism as a view of, uh, what moral, uh, of how moral judgment and moral facts work, those actually make it fit Nietzsche's own positive non-moral values really well. Uh, third, I'll briefly argue against a fictionalist account of Nietzsche's metaethics offered by Nadim Hussein. Uh, Hussein uh, thinks that uh, valuing when you're doing it the right way, according to Nietzsche, involves a certain kind of pretending or regarding something as true while knowing it's not true. Uh, but I think a subjectivism based on passion fits Nietzsche's positive views much better than this fictionalist thing. Uh, and last, I'll discuss some of the most colorful concepts of Thus Spoke Zarathustra. The overman, the eternal recurrence, and the character of Zarathustra himself. And I'll show how the subjectivist understanding of Nietzsche and of Nietzsche's values helps us better understand these concepts. Uh, so one thing first. Uh, here's just a general methodological worry you might have. So Nietzsche is writing at the end of the 19th century. Uh, traditionally, when people talk about metaethics, they say, like, yeah, everything starts with G more at the beginning of the 20th century. So all these distinctions and positions that I'm laying out, uh, we've done so much work over the last 100 years to like, get clear on how exactly everything works. Nietzsche didn't have any of that going on. Is it just culpably anachronistic to take our 21st century metaethical categories and apply it to these, this like 19th century German philosopher? Um, so this much has to be conceded. Uh, Nietzsche wasn't thinking about how to position himself optimally on our current sort of map of the you know, various positions. Uh, he didn't think, you know, OK, non-cognitivism has these advantages, fictionalism has these advantages, subjectivism has these. Which one is the most fits what I want to do? Uh, I think if you went back in time and sort of said, look, here is uh, like Darwell Gibbard and Realton's moral discourse and practice. Take a look. See which, one, which view you like. He'd just be like, OK, this is just a huge amount of new information. I, I, you know, I'm going to have to take a long time to think about this uh, before I choose. Uh, he didn't have these things worked out. Um, in light of this, I think the, the right thing to ask is, what really mattered to Nietzsche? Uh, there are a lot of things that didn't matter to him. Uh, and some metaethical views accommodate those concerns. Uh, so we should try to figure out what accommodates his concerns, what views would uh, give him the things he wanted, uh, but not sort of give an interpretation of Nietzsche any extra points for solving problems that he didn't care about, or that he specifically said, I don't care about. If, if he does that, look, the, your interpretation doesn't get any points for solving that problem, even if we regard it as a serious problem. He didn't. 
Um, I think error theory best captures his rejection of morality and explains the importance of the death of God. Uh, Nietzsche's lack of concern for universality of morality and objectivity, uh, and his emphasis on individual passion and how it creates value, those make subjectivism the best account of his positive view. Okay, so uh, let me first go to the part where I talk about why I think Nietzsche is an error theorist about existing moral discourse. Uh, and so, just one uh, thing that I'm kind of religious about. Uh, Nietzsche interpretation should have lots and lots of textual citations in it. People should not be just like making up stuff and not like grounding in stuff in text. So I've, this is why the handout is important. I hope uh, people have them uh, so you can see just like what the text says and examine it for yourself and see if what I'm saying checks out with it. Um, okay. Uh, there's a lot of textual evidence for interpreting Nietzsche as an error theorist about existing moral discourse. So, in Daybreak, uh, one of his uh, earlier works, he says, It is errors which, as the basis of all moral judgment, impel men to their moral actions. He also says, I deny morality as I deny alchemy. But I do not deny that there have been alchemists who believed in these premises and acted in accordance with them. I also deny immorality. Not that countless people feel themselves to be immoral, but that there is any true reason so to feel. If those books are Arthustra, he says, uh, there is an old illusion which is called good and evil. In Twilight of the Idols, he claims there are altogether no moral facts, and he likens moral belief to religious belief. Uh, describing all moral judgment as error and illusion, uh, comparing morality to alchemy, Nietzsche is characterizing positive moral judgment, judgment that something really is right or wrong, as belief in a kind of thing that doesn't exist. Since it doesn't take much semantic or metaphysical sophistication to be an error theorist about some domain of discourse, such a reading isn't anachronistic. Nietzsche's an atheist. He's an error theorist about gods. He thinks that existing religious discourse expresses belief in gods, and also thinks no gods exist. Uh, now, it's definitely not uncontroversial to regard Nietzsche as an error theorist as uh, existing, about existing moral discourse. There are plenty of interpreters with other views, until quite recently, Views on which Nietzsche was a moral realist, who just had a really weird moral view, uh, were somewhat more popular. Uh, people thought he thinks that morality has something to do with the will to power, and that's the right answer about what morality is. People are wrong, but there is there are real moral facts about rightness and wrongness out there. People just don't quite have them right. Uh, I'm saying, look, there's just no rightness and wrongness out there at all, but that's his view. Um, uh, on, on those realist views, Nietzsche would not be rejecting morality entirely, he'd just be offering a radical and weird new moral theory. Uh, but I don't, I'm not having one of those views. I'm saying he thinks there are no moral facts at all, and thus that any beliefs about there being rightness and wrongness are false. Uh, so these realist views were criticized pretty heavily by my dissertation advisor, Brian Leiter, in Nietzsche's Metaethics Against the Privileged Readings. Uh, so, uh, but, but it's really boring when someone like just expounds their advisor's views, so I'll just skip over the part where I agree with them, and get to the part where I disagree with them. Um, so, here's what Brian thinks uh, that I disagree with. He thinks we should be, we shouldn't ascribe to Nietzsche a cognitive view about moral judgment, a view in which moral judgments are beliefs. Uh, and here's what he says. Uh, he says, Nietzsche, in my view, has no interesting or even precisely determinable semantics of ethical discourse. There are simply not adequate grounds for assigning to Nietzsche a view on such subtle matters as whether ethical language is primarily cognitive or non-cognitive. It clearly evinces aspects of both descriptive and prescriptive discourse. So, Leiter would claim that I go too far in interpreting Nietzsche as an error theorist about existing moral discourse. So, error theory is the combination of cognitivism, where you say that moral judgments are beliefs, with anti realism, there are no moral facts. So, if you can't read Nietzsche as someone who thinks that moral judgments are beliefs, if you think, hey, he might have held that moral judgments were actually desires that people act in a certain way, or emotional responses to certain ways of acting, well, in that case, you can't read him as an error theorist, because part of having a false belief is having a belief. If you just have a desire or an emotion, it's not clear how that can be false. So you don't get all moral judgments <coughs> false anymore, uh, which is the error theorist interpretation. So why do I want to read Nietzsche as a cognitivist? Well, this allows a much better explanation of how atheism undermines Christian morality. So here's a quote from Nietzsche. Uh, when one gives up the Christian faith, one pulls the right to Christian morality out from under one's feet. This morality is by no means self-evident. It has truth only if God is the truth. It stands or falls with faith in God. A cognitivist interpretation allows us to understand what's going on here. Uh, it allows us to understand theistic beliefs, beliefs in God, as providing foundations for moral beliefs. 
Uh, maybe 